Welcome to the Daily Race. Okay, we're uh, we're studying the book of Numbers here. We're in Numbers chapter 4. And uh, yesterday we talked about... <coughs> sorry. Talked about the idea of first fruits. That the Levites, this, this tribe of Israel, uh, were set apart for the Lord for service. And they represented uh, the firstborn of, of all of the Israelite uh, families. Uh, now, in chapter 4, it gets down specifically to what their responsibilities are. And these responsibilities are broken down by clan. Uh, some clans are responsible for the sacred objects. Some clans are responsible for general uh, uh, maintenance, general uh, work around the tabernacle. Some clans were responsible just for, for set up and tear down, uh, carrying the load. And as we read through all this, it's, it's kind of, you read through, all right, there's details here. This is what they're doing. This is responsibilities. But again, read through, you begin to see some, uh, a, a phrase that it's said over and over again is they're counting uh, the men in each clan that are going to be available for service. And, and it says this, that the men aged 30 to 50, it says this over and over again, men aged 30 to 50 who are uh, available, who are um, qualified to be able to serve in the temple. In fact, it, it sums up that this whole chapter here, it says, so Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of Israel listed all the Levites by their clans and family all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle and for its transportation numbered 8,580. All right, so there's an age requirement actually to serve in the temple. It wasn't just anyone could serve in the temple. It was a specific tribe, and not just anyone from this tribe. Uh, people from these clans had specific roles that they could and, and couldn't do, and even the men from these tribes only from the age 30 to 50. You had to be 30 years old before you could be, begin to, to be a priest uh, to do work in the temple. And we could just kind of read through this and kind of glance through it. And Okay, yeah, that's good good facts, good information. Uh, 30 years old is, is a requirement to go into this. But as I was reading that here today, it just took me all the way to the New Testament, to Luke chapter 3. Jesus has just been baptized. And Luke... Uh, begins with Jesus' birth account. It introduces us to, uh, to obviously, to, to Mary and to Joseph. And Jesus is born, and we hear about John the Baptist being born. And then John the Baptist begins his ministry, and Jesus goes out and is baptized uh, by John the Baptist. Uh, the, the beginning of his public ministry. So he's gone into the wilderness, for, or he's about to, to do that to, to begin it. Uh, but it says this, uh, Luke says this, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his public ministry. 30 years old. Is that a coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. Now, see, uh, by the time Jesus uh, came here on this earth, not only was the, the temple still operating, uh, it was still uh, moving forward all of the, the daily operations. There's still the Levites that, that had to be 30 years old to, to operate in there. But there's also a, uh, a culture, uh, a system of religious leaders, rabbis, um, that were responsible for, for teaching in the temple, for teaching the people uh, the faith of, of the Jewish faith. Uh, they would have disciples that they would, would train up and that they would mentor over years. And uh, the best of the best of these young men would become rabbis themselves. And they would enter their public ministry at, guess what? 30 years old. 30 years old is when priests began being priests. 30 years old is when rabbis began being rabbis. And 30 years old is when Jesus entered into his public ministry. You see, Jesus was, was revolutionary in, in what he was telling everyone. He was breaking down the, the mindset of the, the old covenant with God and what the kingdom of God was, was really like. But he also did it within the context of his culture. He wasn't a 18-year-old kid out there trying to, to turn over tables and all that stuff. He would have been flatly rejected from you. You're not, you're not old enough. <laughs> you, you haven't gone through the, the, the right process. Jesus waited until the time was right. 30 years old and entered into his, his public ministry. There's a time and there's a season for, for everything. Now, this isn't supposed to be some strict you know, mandate that you can only be 30 years old to certain, no, that, that's not what it's about. It's about how God works within the systems that he creates. And it's about how uh, the preparation, everything that, that was set up for this. It says uh, later on in, in the letters in the New Testament, it says, and, God, and Jesus gave up his life at just the right time. God's timing is, is always perfect. Now, you might seem like, hey, I'm, I'm waiting too long for this to happen, or it's, you know, it's not happening quick enough, 
Or maybe opportunities come to you and you think you're not ready. You know, I'm, I'm too young for this. At just the right time. God's timing is always perfect. And even today as we're looking at this, the book of Numbers, and we're kind of reading what are, let's be honest, kind of some very mundane details about these clans and the responsibilities. Just that, that nugget there of, of when they began to serve, when they began to be priests in the temple. And we fast forward all the way. Remember, the Old Testament illuminates the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament is the story of God's redemption plan pointing to the fulfillment of Jesus. And here we have this, this strong tie in this kind of obscure passage in, in Numbers chapter 4 pointing to the fact that Jesus began his ministry. And as Hebrews so uh, eloquently puts it, Jesus is our high priest. A high priest like none other. He goes into the presence of God and makes that final sacrifice for all of mankind. That he is the greatest high priest and the final high priest. Uh, that this picture of what is happening here in with the Levites, this picture of what is happening in the tabernacle is fulfilled in Jesus. And, and the parallel there, that the connection there is, is, is undeniable. Everything that Jesus is doing in his life, he's God in the flesh. He's fulfilling the law, fulfilling the law, and establishing a new covenant, a new agreement with God and his people. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for just another opportunity to, to wake up today, to, to serve you, to spend some time with you. Um, God, we just want to uh, just begin this day with just praise, just uh, these little nuggets that you, you, you place in, in your word for us that just remind us just how, how detailed your story is, um, how, how planned out the, the redemption account is, God. That this wasn't just something that you haphazardly threw together. This wasn't just some plan B that got thrown together after the fall, God. But, uh, God, you, you love us. Your, your plan to save us is amazing. God, we just stand in, in awe. And it also builds our faith, God. Just knowing, we, we, as we see these things, we just tr learn to trust you more and more and more. So God, help that, that trust that, that begins in our brain and our mind as we, we learn facts, God. Help us to make the, the 18 inches down to our heart. God, help us to actually believe more. Help us to actually put into, help us to put into actions uh, this trust that's building within us. We love you. We thank you for today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.